Hey kids, do you remember Lewis dot diagrams? Do you want to draw more than one of them at once? Correct. That's right, today we're talking about bonded Lewis dot diagrams. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Chem and Asha. I'm your host Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up nerds? Today we're going to represent ionic and covalent structures using Lewis dot diagrams. <laughs> True story bro. Let's get started. Bonded Lewis dot diagrams. Lewis. A lesson from the bonding unit. Ionic structures. Look for a metal and a non-metal. Draw the Lewis dot diagrams for both. Lewis. Show the metal transferring electrons to the non-metal. Draw the resulting ions with brackets and a charge. Notice in the picture below that we have calcium losing two electrons and each chlorine gaining one. So calcium has a plus two charge shown in the brackets and each chlorine has a minus one charge shown in the brackets. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do an example here. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, so we've got Na and Cl. So one of the first and most important things to do when drawing these is to figure out what type of bond type we have. So we look for the types of elements we have. So we have Na and Cl. What type of elements are Na and Cl? All right, so Na is over on the left-hand side of the periodic table, so it's a metal and chlorine over on the right-hand side of the periodic table would make it a non-metal. Good, because if this was covalent bonding, it would be very different. This is ionic, so we're gonna draw it the way that we just learned for ionic structures. Okay, we're gonna take this also one step further and we're gonna figure out what the electron configurations are from our periodic table for those elements. All right, so uh, looking at the periodic table for Na, I've got two, eight, one, and for chlorine, I've got two, eight, seven. Good. When we're drawing the Lewis structures for a compound, we want to get the ones for the individual elements first. So what would the Lewis structure look like for sodium? Lewis, Lewis. All right, so I want to look at the valence electrons. So Na would have one valence electron. So I'm going to have one dot on top for Na. And then for chlorine, I need seven. Um, I kind of want to keep track of what the different electrons look like when I put them together. So I'll do open circles here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good job on the order there, good. All right, so now we have to show the transfer of electrons. Okay, so Na is gonna lose the one, okay? Right. And chlorine only needs one more, so it's gonna gain it, right? Okay, so if you look at those electron configurations for sodium of two, eight, one, when it loses that one, what's it gonna have in its outer shell? It's gonna have two, eight, which okay. is full. Good, it's gonna have eight electrons. And when chlorine gains that one, how many will it have in its outer shell? It'll have eight, two Good. eight. Good, so we're looking for that noble gas configuration here. Good, and they'll both have the eight. Okay. All right, so now what do I do? I transferred. Right. So now we've transferred, now we have to draw them, okay, with the, uh, the dots shown being transferred. All right, got that. So. Okay, so sodium lost this dot, right? So no dots, good. Okay. And uh, we need one thing on here that we have uh, in our instructions. What do we need on anything once it's lost or gained electrons? It needs some sort of a charge with brackets. Good, so right. we draw brackets around our entire element, and then we put our charge just outside those brackets. So since it lost an electron, remember electrons have a negative charge, it lost one electron, so what would its charge end up being? Uh, it'd be plus one. Good, you lose a negative, you become positive. All right, so let's draw chlorine then. All right, so Cl, and it gained the one. And again, I can kind of see that it came from somewhere else because it's the darkened circle. Okay. Okay, brackets. Now it gained an electron, and electrons are negative, so what's chlorine's charge? It has to be minus one. Good, it becomes chloride. We'll talk about that later. Good. All right, we're gonna do one more example here. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, we've got Mg and Cl. So again, what type of elements do we have? Um, Mg is a metal and Cl is a non-metal. Good, how many valence electrons does Mg have? Um, Mg is in group two, so it's got two. Good, and chlorine being in group 17 has how many? Seven. Perfect. All right, so this is metal and non-metal. This is ionic again, so let's show that transfer of electrons. 
All right, well, MG needs to lose two, but it looks like Chlorine only needs one. Okay, so it looks like Magnesia needs a little more help here. Okay, so... So what do you think's gonna happen? Can I just have another Chlorine in there? So yeah, remember, we're not just reacting one single atom of Magnesium and one single atom of Chlorine. There's billions of them. So yeah, there's more Chlorines there, so let's draw another one. Okay. Draw that transfer, good, okay. So I think we have our transfer set, right? Because magnesium's losing all of its and chlorine is gaining to get full outer shells. So let's draw these with the brackets and charges. All right, so MG in brackets, it lost two electrons. Good. So it will have a plus two charge. Very good. And then I have two chlorines that I have to draw out. And bracket. Um, so, each one gained one electron, right? Yep, each individual chlorine gained one electron. So then I guess they each have to be minus one. Correct. Now, would you like a short way to draw two of those identical diagrams? Sure, it's a lot of dots. And okay, circles. so one way we can do this is by simply putting a coefficient and meaning that we have two of them. So we have two, so we're gonna draw a two in front of one of them. All right. We could just leave it like that for future reference. So if you know you have two or more identical ions, um, just make sure you put the coefficient of how many there are there, but always maintain that original charge of what they are individually. That's why you put that minus one there. Got it. You try number one. Draw the bonded Lewis diagram for the compound that's formed between the elements Mg and O. Continuing on with molecular structures, which remember have covalent bonds. Look for two or more non-metals. Draw the Lewis dot diagrams for all. Lewis. Share electrons so that all elements have eight valence electrons. We say that it fulfills the octet rule where everything has eight valence electrons. Exception, hydrogen only needs two valence electrons to be stable. Taking a look at the diagram below, we see we have two fluorine atoms on the left where they both have seven valence electrons. They're both kind of missing one to get that eight, that octet rule. If you take a look at how they come together to form F2 bonded, they have those two electrons in the middle between them that were originally those single valence electrons, those unpaired electrons. That has now become our covalent bond. Let's do an example. Fu, you ready? I am. All right, we're gonna look at H2O. We're gonna draw our individual elements Lewis dot diagrams first. Lewis. So let's start with hydrogen. Okay, so I've got H and hydrogen has one valence electron, so one dot. Um, I got two of them though, right? Yeah. H2O, so I'm gonna draw another one with a dot. Good, and oxygen. All right, so oxygen has six valence electrons. I'm gonna draw those open circles again so we can kind of tell the difference between whose electrons are whose. Very good. Now, it is important, because there's always the possibility that this could be an ionic bond and not a covalent bond, we should actually categorize those elements. So how would you categorize hydrogen and oxygen? Uh, they're actually both non-metals, so. Good, so if they're both non-metals, now we're sure that it's a covalent bond where electrons will be shared. Good. All right, so let's start with hydrogen. Let's talk about each hydrogen. It has one valence, as you've shown. How many more does it need to have a full outer shell? All right, well, hydrogen's only shell is that first shell, which only holds two electrons, so it only needs a total of two, so it already has one, right? Good, so each of those hydrogens needs one more. All right, good, now let's look at oxygen. How many electrons does it need to have a full outer shell? Okay, well oxygen's not one of the exceptions, so it follows the octet rule, so it needs eight. Good, so how many more electrons does so it, it need then? needs two, it's got six. Good, so you can kind of see this as mutually beneficial. Each hydrogen needs one more, oxygen needs two total more. So we're gonna kind of link them up, pair up the electrons to make our covalent bonds. All right, so I'm gonna start with oxygen here. I'm gonna draw it six. And then I'm gonna take a hydrogen, put it right there. And if I put the electron there, I can see how they kind of pair up. Good, and with the color coding you did, that really helps see where each electron sort of came from originally. And with them being paired up, we're getting a covalent bond. And the other hydrogen, I'm gonna draw to the side over here. Right there. It's looking good. Um, one of the things I like to do is have students check everything in terms of do we have the right number of electrons. So let's actually start with oxygen. I want you to circle everything around oxygen. Right, 
So all of these dots, right? Yep. So how many electrons are around oxygen right now? Don't worry about where they came from, but how many total are around it right now? That's eight. Good, so we're fulfilling the octet rule, good. Now for hydrogen, circle all the electrons around it. Anything that is shared counts for both, by the way. Oh, I see how this is working. Good, so how many electrons does hydro each hydrogen have around it? So each one has two. Good, and again, it's not the octet rule technically, but as you mentioned earlier, hydrogen is full with two valence electrons. Now we kind of get a bent shape. We've seen a water molecule before, it has a bent shape. So doing this Lewis dot diagram helps show why it's a bent shape. Lewis. Good. Let's do another example. Foo, are you still ready? I am, let's go. All right, we've got CCl4. Let's begin with carbon. How many valence electrons does it have? All right, carbon has four electrons in its outer shell, so I'm gonna actually draw two different colors here. I'm gonna stick with carbon and black. So one, two, three, four. Good, and it looks like we have four chlorines. How many valence electrons do they each have? All right, so chlorine has seven valence electrons, and there are four chlorines here, so bear with me a second here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, very good. Um, so we're looking at carbon, we're looking at chlorine. We can't forget again, just to be safe, how do we classify these elements? All right, uh, they're both non-metals again. They're both to the right of that staircase. All right, good. So we know it's gonna be a covalent bond where electrons are shared. All right, so carbon has how many valence electrons again? It has four. How many more would it need to get a full shell of eight? It would need four. All right, it needs four more. What about chlorine? Chlorine has seven, so it needs one more to get to eight. Good, each one of those chlorines needs one more. So you can maybe start to see how things are gonna line up, but, but there is a problem with chlorine, or I was carbon. just gonna ask, because I was wondering, when I drew carbon, you have me draw these two on top, and well, they're already paired up, so how does carbon end up bonding? Good question, and that's the official way to do the Lewis dot diagram, so you did do it correctly. Lewis. But when it's bonding, we kinda have to get it ready for bonding, and we wanna shift one of those electrons to um, the left-hand side of the carbon. And when we have all those electrons unpaired, they're gonna be ready to pair up and form new bonds. Okay, so it should end up looking like this then before bonding. Exactly, so sometimes okay. you have to rearrange the electrons to get it right for bonding, carbon being the prime example. So you see how things can kind of match up now? Gotcha, yeah, it makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna put carbon here in the middle with those four ready for bonding pair, uh, electrons there. Good. I'm gonna switch colors here to green. And it looks like chlorine is gonna be like that on each side. Good, yeah, we can kind of move around where the okay. electrons are just to pair them up. Looks really good. I always like to do that last check. So let's start with carbon, circle all the electrons around it. Anything that is shared by both counts for both. So how many do I have there? Got eight. Good, fulfills the octet rule. Let's check all the chlorines. Eight there. Eight there, kind of looks like a Venn diagram. It does, and again, the electrons that are shared are where the overlap occurs in oh, what looks like a Venn that. diagram. Okay. All right, looks good. We're all set with CCl4. You try number two. Try Lewis dot diagram for NH3. Lewis. A pair of electrons is called a single bond. When there are not enough electrons, sometimes you have to share more electrons between atoms. Two pairs of electrons is called a double bond, and three pairs of electrons is called a triple bond. Notice how in the picture below, we see between the two carbons there are four electrons, or two pairs. This means we have a double bond between the carbon atoms. All right, we're gonna do an example here. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, we're gonna draw the molecule O2. All right. So let's draw the two oxygen atoms first. How many valence electrons does oxygen have? Six. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna go back to the open circles thing. All right, they each right. have six. Okay, so how many do they need to get to their octet? Well, since they each have six, they're both going to need two more to get eight. All right, so is just sharing one pair gonna do it? Well, if they shared one pair, they would each have seven now, not eight. So we're gonna need to share more than just one pair then. Yeah, okay. So since they each need two, these two unpaired, right? Yep. They could each share two of those together? Yeah, this is kind of like if we were sharing crayons, right? So okay. if you were missing the purple and blue, and I was missing the red and orange, 
well, you have a red and orange. So I can just share your red and orange, and you can share my purple and blue, and we'd still have access to all eight colors, right? Okay, right. So you can share more than just one. So here we're gonna share two between them. Okay, so I kind of gotta, I don't know, like move them to the middle, I guess, right? Yeah, we're gonna shift those electrons around a bit. Okay, so can I just line them up in the middle? Looks good. Okay. Does that look okay? All right, so let's just circle the electrons that are around those elements just to see how many we have. Okay, so anything in the middle counts for both, right? They're being not, shared, right? Okay, yes. so not just the two that it had originally. So I would circle all of this, and it's kind of shaped weird, but I do still have eight electrons. Good. And then if I do the other one, we got that overlap, this also has eight. Okay, so and just to reiterate, how many pairs are in between those two? So I have four electrons, which is two pairs, so that should be a double bond. That's right? a double bond, good. You try number three. Draw the Lewis. diagram for a nitrogen molecule, M2. That's gonna do it for today's episode on bonded Lewis dot diagrams. Later, nerds. Lewis. Today's episode is brought to you by Rap Snacks. Migos sour cream with a dab of ranch. Cause dabbing is a lifestyle. But we never off, always on to the break of dawn. S-E-I-E-N-C-E -E -E, in the hall, they call S-Wing. You know we never wear a tie. Like my homies, boys, two men, it's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. Uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. Uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug and chill to the next episode.